Hi, my name is John Savile, and in this video, I want to just quickly talk about the ways in which I can authenticate with Azure AD and how that interacts with my on-premises Active Directory. So if I take a step back, ordinarily I could think about, well, I have my on-premises Active Directory. And I say on-premises, I just mean it's not Azure AD. These domain controllers could be running in Azure's in, uh, infrastructure as a service. And then in the cloud, I have Azure AD. And what I think about is, well, I have users in my on-premises Active Directory. And the way we get them into Azure AD is this thing called Azure AD Connect. And this is going to replicate those objects in. And so now that user also has an account in Azure AD. So now I am that user. And I want to authenticate. Maybe I want to authenticate to use an Azure service. Maybe I'm using Office 365. Maybe I'm using some other cloud service that has been federated via Azure AD. I and mean, that's the big benefit of Azure AD is that federation broker. So I want to authenticate. And there's really three key ways this can happen today. So one of the things Azure AD Connect can do, in addition to sending the user objects and various attributes, it can optionally send a hash of the user's password hash. It's kind of a hash of the hash. It's not sending the, the base hash that's in Active Directory. Instead, it uses actually a number of other different algorithms to create a new hash. It uses a salt, for example. And then it sends that into Azure AD. So now I have the user's hash of the hash in Azure AD. So option one, so the first thing I can do is that authentication can actually happen directly against Azure AD. So that's option one, because it's tied into the fact that I'm sending the password hash. So when I authenticate, Azure AD just locally does that authentication for me. That's by far the simplest option. It doesn't require any interaction with on-premises domain controllers or anything else. But it's really kind of a same sign-on because it's actually a different account, really. It just happens to have the same username, the same password. But when I do this, users may get prompted for username and passwords on various different occasions because it is a different sign-on. It's same from the user's perspective, but it's actually different authentication points. The second option is I can have a federation service on premises. So for example, ADFS. And this has been used in the past for if I wanted to use other cloud services, I would federate with them. Federation enables me to use my home realm credential with those other services. So users don't have to have a separate username and password on the other services. That's very advantageous in terms of users don't have to try and remember 20 different accounts. Or worse, they use the same password for 20 different accounts. One of those in the supply chain gets hacked. Well, now they've got the password for your domain, which is a bad thing. And so with federation, it enables you to create federated relationships with other services so your home realm credential can be used. Well, you can federate between Azure AD and your on-premises via a federation service, so ADFS in this example. So now what would happen is, when the user tries to authenticate, ADFS will kick in. They will be redirected to now say, actually, what you need to do is they will redirect the user. They will go and talk to their ADFS server. So this is kind of option two. ADFS will go and talk to Active Directory. It will create a number of claims about the user, put that into a token, send it back to the user. The user will then present that to Azure AD and authenticate. So what this means is the authentication happened against my on-premises Active Directory. I'm never sending my credential, my password to Azure AD, and I get single sign-on. Because if I've already authenticated to AD, this is just gonna be completely seamless to me. If I'm gonna browse, there'll be a few redirects bouncing around, but it's single sign-on. Also with the federation services, I can do some cool stuff. 
Federation lets me maybe use certificate-based authentication. I could hook into third-party MFA providers. I can use all the policy capabilities of ADFS. And so what historically I've seen with my customers is the bigger customers, well, they want that visibility into the authentication. So they tended to use ADFS because they had it anyway. They had all these relationships with other cloud services. But over time, as they start to really adopt Azure AD, instead of federating directly with cloud services, well, they'll use the Azure AD's federation capabilities. And so now they're sitting around with this federation infrastructure just to talk to Azure AD, and there's a fair amount of infrastructure required for this. More and more, them move to Azure AD MFA. So they really don't want to maintain this thing. And so the new option is something called pass-through authentication. And with pass-through authentication, the user, so this is kind of now the option three, the user, yes, it sends the credential through to Azure AD, and Azure AD really kind of writes that authentication request to a list. And what I have now is I have a pass-through authentication agent running on-premises. By default, it would be the Azure AD Connect box. But I would install additional instances for scale and for resiliency. And what this does is it connects outbound, so not having to open up firewall ports or anything else. And it will pull down the authentication request, authenticate again against the on-premises AD, and then basically send back a yes, no. So this is my option three, password authentication. In addition to this capability here, there's also kind of a seamless sign-on addition. So when I try and access various services, it will give me that same kind of experience as single sign-on that historically I got with ADFS. This will even work with things like Kerberos. So this is the direction, password authentication, I think a lot of things will go to. So to summarize, three options. One, I send my password hash to Azure AD, and I actually authenticate against Azure AD. I send my credential to Azure AD. It's encrypted using TFS when I send that in, and that is authenticating me locally. There is no ongoing communication with my domain controllers other than the replication. Option two, I set up federation. Now when I authenticate, I do not send my credential to Azure AD. I'll get redirected to my federation service. It will authenticate me. It will create me that token that I will then use to talk. I will get single sign-on. I'm gonna get very few prompts for credentials. And now, even if I do option two, or option three, I can still send the password hash here. This can actually be fairly useful as a break the glass type scenario. Hey, uh, something has gone wrong, these aren't working, PowerShell command in here, and I can flip it over to password hash so people can still authenticate. So that, that's always available as an option. So just because I use another option doesn't mean I can't send the password hash. It can be useful to have as that worst case scenario thing. So option two is I use the federation, but I have to maintain this federation infrastructure. Option three, password authentication. Hey, I have this agent, agents running on premises. The user does send their credential to Azure AD, gets added to a list requesting authentication. It's taken by the password authentication agent, sends back a yes, no, user logs on. There's the seamless sign-on addition to password authentication that gives me an experience very much like ADFS. So those are my three options. There's not a right or a wrong in this. Um, historically, I've seen smaller companies tend to go for this option. It's very easy to get up and running, no infrastructure required. Larger companies have tend to go the ADFS option, but I think going forwards, most will actually move towards the option three, the new password authentication. I hope that was useful. Uh, thanks for watching.